Hello. <laughs> when I first heard about heat pumps, I thought we were talking about heels with built-in heating. Uh, but that's not a thing, so I'm still going to be pursuing that patent. Uh, if you're not laughing, pumps are a type of shoe. And if you're still not laughing, heat is a type of energy, typically associated with temperature. So what is a heat pump? Uh, it's a bit of a misnomer because it cools as well. Uh, unlike fossil fuels that are burned to generate heat, a heat pump moves energy from one place to another, leveraging a refrigeration cycle. And it can be used to make hot water as well. Heat pumps first gained popularity in the 70s during the oil crisis, but were relegated to warmer climates, that's the warmer colors here in the states, because their performance in sub-freezing temperatures left a lot to be desired. And unfortunately, like many of us, heat pumps are still trying to escape the reputation they made for themselves in the 80s and 90s. But the heat pumps of today are not your mother's heat pumps. They have significantly better performance and they can really stack up in just about any climate. <laughs> Air source heat pumps are some of the cheapest and they work well in a lot of the United States. If you live in a colder climate, you might be looking for a cold climate air source heat pump as they have better capacity and efficiency in colder temperatures. Now, if you live in a super frigid environment where you might consider cutting into a tauntaun to stay warm for the winter, you're looking at a ground source heat pump or a geothermal heat pump. They have even better capacity and efficiency because they harvest heat from the ground, which maintains a more stable temperature throughout the year. Heat pumps have been tested in a variety of climates and can perform really well, even without supplemental or backup heating. But if you're skeptical or a doomsday planner, put in backup heat, that's fine. You probably won't use it super often, but it's good to have peace of mind. You can save up to 70% of the energy you use on space and water heating, and removing combustible devices from your home, like gas furnaces, is going to improve your indoor air quality. <laughs> Prior to sizing your equipment, you're gonna wanna make your home as efficient as possible. To do this, you're gonna put in air sealing and insulation and put in low flow devices, and that's gonna lower your upfront costs and operational costs as well. Just be mindful what air sealing does to your ventilation. There are cheaper all electric alternatives to heat pumps, but they consume significantly more energy. And oftentimes the incremental costs of heat pumps can be overcome with tax credits or rebates. Uh, at the company I used to work for iCast, we had a lot of <laughs> luck uh, putting in outdoor heat pumps with an existing furnace used as backup heat and air distribution. And when that furnace dies, you can replace it with the air handler, a great stopgap measure uh, to a fully electric system. If you have an electric furnace or baseboard heating and you're moving to a heat pump, you're always gonna save both energy and utility costs. If you're going from a gas system to an electric system, you want to do a utility bill analysis to understand what your actual savings are going to be. As more equipment in the home becomes electric, the grid is going to have to grow to accommodate this demand. And if it's slow to adapt and heat pumps are installed without on-site renewable or storage, customers risk diminishing returns on their investment. About 70 countries, those are the ones shaded in green here, covering 76% of global emissions, have net zero emissions plans by 2050. In order to do this, we're going to have to move away from burning fossil fuels for heat. A lot of colder climates and regions already have plans to aggressively target heat pump adoption in their territories. And this is great because it's gonna lay the foundation for reducing emissions and switching to carbon neutral energy production. Net zero emissions cannot be achieved without electrification, but it's really going to be the mass adoption of renewable energy working in tandem with primarily electric equipment to provide for our transportation and conditioning needs. And heat pumps are gonna play a big part in that. Cities are adopting more stringent energy codes for new construction and retrofit, and to reach these reduction targets, we're going to have to move away from the lower hanging fruit measures. Looking at you, lighting. And we're gonna have to move towards installing high efficiency equipment like heat pumps. Almost half of the global energy that we produce, use in the home goes to space and water conditioning. And 47% of homes in the United States fulfill this need through gas, so there's a massive potential for the adoption of heat pump technology. Uh, the IRA, you've probably heard of it. Uh, they're gonna be funneling a ton of money towards energy efficiency in the home over the next few years. Notable call outs up to 8,000 for heat pumps and 1750 for a heat pump water heater. So stay tuned to see how that pans out. Woo! Uh, heat pumps are a massively growing market segment that are only gonna continue to accelerate with this additional funding. It is a great time to be a manufacturer, a contractor, or an implementer to get ready for this boom. 
It's time to heat pump it up. Yeah. <laughs>